Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my tutorial series in Unreal Engine 4. What I'd like to do in this video is to explore building our first level, that's not going to be this test level which we've been kind of fiddling in, exploring the content browser, the drag menu over here, and actually adding lights in and setting up our basic level to see if we can add some gameplay in the next video. So to start, let's start off with creating a new level. So in the content browser, I want you to right click. Now you'll see a new menu that you haven't seen before. This is essentially your creator allows you to create items and objects and types of anything you could think of, and each one's sorted into their own categories. However, for now, well, you're just going to create a level, which is right here in this basic panel, which is essentially the most common things you'll be creating. So let's just click level. It'll create in the asset browser. We can call it, let's say, main underscore level. Press enter, and here it is. The, ask, the asterisk is save. It's basically the, the item has not been saved yet. So we can just go ahead and ignore that and we can double click. It'll give us another option to save the content, which sure, we'll save it now. And click yes and here we are. So you'll see that we're in complete darkness. This is okay, this is normal. So if you look around, you don't see anything. If we go a little bit up, you might be able to see this grid. This is the world grid. This just basically gives you a baseline to start with where kind of zero zero is in the world. For now, Let's start with adding our base floor we want to start on. So in this panel over here, I want us all to go to geometry and box. Click this and drag it in. And you can just let it go wherever you like. Now something you need to be aware of is the fact that it's only outlined right now. You can't actually see it. This is due to the fact that there's no lighting in our world. So everything is dark. To get around this, just for now, let's go ahead and switch our view mode to unlit. So in the top left of the viewport, Let's click this button and go to unlit. This will make it so nothing's affected by lighting. And for now, that's what we like. Okay, so what you're looking at now is your very first BSP item. BSP is a form of geometry generation that UE4 implements, and this is strictly a UE4 concept. Essentially, it allows us to create sections of geometry, sections of 3D space that's occupied, and allows physics to sit on top of it, interact with it, and essentially just be a physical object in space. And it's perfect for our, what we want to use for floors. So how do we take this and make it wider? Because right now it's just a cube. It doesn't really fit the purpose of a floor. So you notice when you click it, you start selecting the faces of it. If you click the corners, nothing happens. Purely face right now. If you try to move it, you move the entire object. Okay, we want to stretch it though. And we're going to introduce geometry editing mode. So in the, in the top left, of these buttons we looked at in the past. If you hover the one on the very far right, you'll see it's called geometry editing. Let's click that. Okay, so you get some interesting options here. It may be a bit intimidating because a lot of these terms you may have never heard of before, but that's okay. We don't really need to do a whole lot. Let's click on it, and this will enable editing mode. So now, if you click one of these faces, you'll see that the whole way it's viewed is different now. This is a way of knowing that it is in editing mode. So now we're in geometry editing mode. Let's click our object, take a face, make sure you say it's visibly selected with yellow, and drag. And now you'll see that it's actually expanding the box. And this, pat this kind of texture uh, checkerboard pattern is actually expanding to fit it. We're now inflating our geometry and manipulating it in a way we like. Excellent. So let's make it more floor-like. Let's select the top face. Let's bring it down one, shrink it, grab this face, pull it this way. And lastly, let's go to this side, just so we keep it around this center point. Click this face and drag it out all the way over here. So it's a very long kind of space. All right, so we have our floor. When you're done with geometry editing mode, which we are right now, you can just click place mode. Okay, that's awesome, we have our first floor. So what we want to do now is add some lights, because as you see, we're still unlit, which isn't what we want to be in. Let's go back to lit. Everything's black. Now let's add our very first light. You'll see in here, there's a lights panel. Let's click it. Now there's four types of lights. Two of them we won't really need to care about right now. Specifically directional light and skylight. However, for the intents and purposes of right now, let's add in a few point lights. Point lights are just a, po a light in space, just like a light bulb, that emits light in the surrounding area. So let's drag that in, and you'll see that, voila! Our object's now dynamically lit by this beautiful looking light. 
And you may be wondering what this giant sphere is around at. That is what we call an attenuation sphere. That is the, that fall off for how far the light can fall off to before it reaches invisible or darkness. How much space does that light affect? So for now, let's drag this over here. So we'll have one over here in the very middle. And if we do hold down Alt and click an arrow and drag, it'll create another one. So now we have two lights. Excellent. We have our first little bit of our level. Now, let's click play. And there's another concept you guys haven't been introduced to. If you guys want to play your game, this is the button you need to do it. So we'll click play. Oops. And you'll see we spawn at our camera or where our camera was, but we just fell off the edge. Okay. So let's, let's say I go here. I click play. And voila. I'm in our level. And you'll see I have a gun. I have a little cursor. I can move around with the WSAD keys and the arrow keys if I so choose. And if I left click, I shoot little bouncing balls. This is the template code that was given to us by the template, the first person template. So we can use this to our platforming code later on. But for now, we have our first little bit of a level. And you can press space to jump as well. Mouse to move, look around. So you have all the bells and whistles of a first person project. All right, but so far it's not very interesting. We have just a floor. Okay, let's add some walls, but we're actually gonna do it a different way. PSP editing, while it's nice, it's a bit tedious. We wanna have a bit more control instead of having to go to this geometry editing mode. Okay, let's go to basic. Basic is a set of models, 3D models. Not necessarily the same as BSP, they're a whole another concept of our content. So to start with, let's go with cube and we'll drag that in. And you'll notice it's different. It no longer doesn't have that checkerboard pattern. That's because this is what we call a 3D model. 3D models function differently than BSP do. These can't be edited in the same way where you can have the face and you can drag the faces. These come as one construct. All we can do to manipulate it is scale it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So as you can see, I wanna put it on the floor, but because of my snap settings, it doesn't fit. So what we talked about in the first episode, let's go to our snap scales right here and bring that down to 10. This will give us a nice wide range to work with. So let's bring it down to here and we'll move our camera to see the whole floor. And you'll notice my camera is really fast. Let's bring our camera settings down. Eh, four is about right. And now pressing R, let's scale it. Oops. The snap scale for this is also quite high. Let's bring that down to 0.25. All right, we have full control now. We can move it into place. Yeah, we'll eyeball, that's about right. We'll shrink it a little bit and we'll give it a nice tall stretch. And voila, we have a wall. And let's do the same thing for the other side. We can just hold on Alt and drag. All right, we have two walls. And lastly, we want another wall to kind of cover up the very end right here. We can move, we can hold down Alt and move it again. Oops, turn down the snap rotations. Let's do 30, uh, that's about right. And we can kind of just drag that in on the end. Perfect, and there we go. We have a little bit of a corridor. Now, you may be wondering, if I, I, wanna, I wanna start at a certain point. I want the player to start an exact point in the level. Ah, oh, you, that's a great idea. What we can do is we can add something called a player start. So in the basic tab, you'll see something called player start. This is where the player will spawn in the room. So you place it right there. You'll see a little bit of a similar pop-up. Now if you press play, it will spawn in facing the direction of the arrow. Now we have full control over where the player will begin. So there, we have two lights, we have basic walls, we have a gun that can shoot bouncing balls off the walls. And we have the beginning of our first little universe. So that'll wrap up this video. This is a basic introduction to scene setup. We'll go over more advanced concepts in the next video, as well as building out some challenges that we can introduce to the player, as well as adding some interesting functionality to our character blueprint. Thank you for joining me.